six different gears out of the 4R100. First gear. Second gear. Third gear. Fourth gear. Fifth gear. Sixth gear. So one really cool thing I can do with this cutaway model is I can apply all these different clutch packs and demonstrate what happens, what's going on for every one of the four speeds in the 4R100. So to do that, I have a hand crank that I made, which is literally just a previously destroyed input shaft, bolted to a crank, and then a handle made from another destroyed input shaft. So that's how I'm going to turn it over. And then uh, in the rear here, I have a one of the reluctor teeth marked with red paint. That's where I'm going to reset at. So what I'm going to do is, as we go through the gears, I'm going to make one full revolution here in the front. We're going to see what it did back here. There are uh, 18 of these reluctor teeth. So each tooth is 20 degrees, and we're going to estimate our gear ratio based on that. We already know what they are, but there's something interesting I want to show you as we go through this video. So how does this all work? Well, I made a custom control body at a Delrin. It's actually two layers of Delrin uh, with worm tracks in between. I'm also using um, I'm two, two of the thicker paper gaskets. And all I'm doing is channeling each of the clutch pack ports through the worm tracks to each of these airports. So as you see, there's nine. So how do we have nine? Well, we have six clutch packs. We have coast, overdrive, intermediate, direct, forward, and low reverse. We also have the band, which I'm not using. That's not in here because that would obstruct our view, but I could, if it's ever in there, I could activate it. So that's seven. The other two lines go up to the pump for torque converter stuff. I have an EPC line and I have a, uh, it's the torque converter clutch solenoid circuit which feeds the torque converter clutch control valve. But we're not gonna do much with that today. That's down the road. I might do some torque converter stuff with this, but for now, uh, nothing. And this is just a dump valve. All right, air pressure's hooked up. We're showing about 32 PSI here on the manifold. All these valves are shut. So we're gonna go through every gear here and see what it all looks like. Uh, one thing I am missing is when you do this sort of thing, you really, you really ought to have a load on the output. That's because there's a lot of drag in here, so things could turn over that normally wouldn't turn over if there was a lag on the back. This is the zero state I'm gonna to try to return to between every gear, showing the, uh, you know, we can we can see which packs are activated and which ones aren't. The reluctor here, I have one marked in red paint. That's gonna, every time we reset, we're gonna return that to the, to the top position. What I'm gonna do is make single revolution turns on the input, and then we're gonna calculate the ratio based on where that winds up. There's 18 teeth, each tooth is 20 degrees, so we ought to be able to eyeball and estimate, get as close as we can. We already know what the ratios are, but you'll see we're gonna do a couple that we don't have published ratios for. We'll get to that in a minute. So let's take a look at neutral. This is what's happening during neutral. As you can see, the forward drum is rotating. The forward drum is spined to the center shaft. So when you rotate the input shaft, you're rotating the overdrive carrier. The overdrive carrier is turning the overdrive ring gear. The ring gear is turning the center shaft. The center shaft is turning the forward drum, and that's where it stops. It's all fixed. See, I can't stop myself from rotating. So if the forward drum is rotating, the forward steels are rotating. And now you can look in here, you can see that our forward ring gear is not rotating. The forward frictions are splined to the forward ring gear. The clutch isn't applied, so you have rotation here. You can see, hopefully you can see that the clutches aren't rotating, but the steels and the drum are. And you see the same thing here in direct because the direct frictions are splined to the forward drum. So anytime the forward drum rotates, the direct frictions rotate. But without activation, nothing's being held, so we don't have any, any engagement there, just more free rotation. And we have that here in the overdrive. Now the overdrive is rotating because they're splined to the coast drum. The coast drum rotates 
do to drag. Now I can stick a flathead in here and stop the coast drum from rotating. Now you see my overdrive frictions are not rotating. But in reality, they're always gonna rotate. That's just the nature of this. So you'll always have an input speed coming out of the sensor, even when you're in neutral or park. So what's actually happening inside of the transmission? Well, believe it or not, all this boils down to just this right here. You have two compound planetary gears. This will provide three forward speeds, one neutral and one reverse. For Ford, it's in C4, C6, AOD, E4OD, 4R100, and 5R110. They all have this same exact arrangement. Eventually, to get it to four speed, all they did was add the overdrive planetary in front of it. And they just applied that to the direct gear of this system. That's all they did. It's just daisy chain it. All of this lives right in here. Everything else you see is how do we lock different parts of this. So a planetary has a sun gear, planets, planet carrier, or arm, and a ring gear. So each planetary has four different components. Any one of those four things can be an input, can be an output, can be held, can be rotating, can be sending, can be receiving, can be have a lot of different modes. But all the rest of this stuff inside this transmission is all what it takes to to hold different parts of these these components here and everything up here is just the overdrive so all these clutch packs are all and the one-way clutches the rollers are all ways in which they lock and hold different components of this gear train right here so this is literally the core from night probably 1950 until for ford 2012 till the 6r140 came out they're all the same we got everything reset to zero. We're gonna apply the, fir the forward clutch, forward clutch pack. That's what uh, drive one is. When we do that, we're gonna lock the steels, the friction to the drum. That's gonna rotate the forward ring gear. You'll see that rotating, which rotates the forward planet carrier, which is blind to the sun gear. Now that sun gear is common with the sun gear for the low reverse. So now the low reverse is activated. The low reverse carrier is rotating. The low reverse carrier is locked to the drum. The low reverse ring gear will be rotating and that is splined with the output shaft as is the forward carrier and that provides our output. So let's fire this up, see what happens. We're gonna go one full rotation on the input shaft. And if you keep watching right here, you'll see the, you should see this pack get engaged. There it goes. So Ford pack is engaged, it's locked. There we go. All right. Let's count up the splines. It looks like about six and a half. I got 2.77 on my output ratio. Our expected was 2.71. That's probably because I just, you know, one thing I'm using eyeballs and maybe I didn't provide enough load on it. But as you can see, we're pretty close. All right, I got it reset. Our tick mark is back on the top. My crank is at the bottom. It's where I want it. We'll reset back to zero inside here. So now we're gonna apply this forward drum again. There it goes. The intermediates. Oop, there it goes. So intermediates locked, forwards locked. Everything else is unlocked. This is second gear, let's see what happens. One revolution, one second. 
I got almost 12 teeth there. We'll call it 11 and a quarter. Our expected on this is 1.54. I get 1.6, but we're close enough. Let's do third gear. <clears throat> it's gonna be forward, intermediate, and direct. And our expected is gonna be a one-to-one -one ratio. Let's lock the forward pack. Forward's locked. Let's lock the intermediate. Intermediate's locked. Let's lock the direct. There it is. Forward, direct, intermediate, locked. Drive three, we're expecting a one-to-one -one ratio. Now you'll see, because we locked the direct drum, the direct steels and frictions are all locked with the direct drum, which is locked to the shell, the forward drum's locked, all of this is all locked together. So now you hear the clicking. That's the intermediate diode that I put in there from 2001. So we hear it clicking. That means our intermediate roller, our intermediate sprag is in overrun. So even though our intermediate clutches are applied, they're not doing anything because <clears throat> that roller's in overrun. All right, one full turn. We're gonna do overdrive real quick before this battery dies. Uh, let's apply that. Not applied. Pop, there it is, that's applied. Let's do it again, one full revolution. Our expected ratio is 0.71. Our expected output is 0.71, which means the output turned faster than the input. So let's count it up, see what happened. So I'm getting a little over 25, about 25 and a quarter, 0.71. So I actually got it right that time. And I don't think I needed to apply a load. I think everything was engaged, so there was no need to put drag on it. But we did it anyway. We're gonna put it in reverse. Reverse is direct. direct coast we can't see coast but we know it's locked and low reverse there we go there it goes You see the output shaft going in the opposite direction. Let's check our teeth. So we're about eight and three quarters. All right, I got 2.06, but I'm not too worried about it. Uh, our expected was 2.18. I probably wasn't putting enough load on it. I was trying not to get in the way so you can see the output shaft turning the other way. All right, this transmission is literally the same as the 5R110. It has all the same stuff inside. The only difference is it's controlled differently because it's controlled electronically. They can apply different, different planetaries and clutch packs whenever they want. And with a, with a valve driven control system here with the 4R100, we can't really do that. But with my air system here, we can do that. What the 5R110 does, first, third, fifth, and sixth are literally the 4R100 first, second, third, or fourth. The difference is those two extra gears are just the gears before it with the overdrive planetary applied to them. So now if you look at the chart here, this is a chart of the 
of the 4R100 standard ratios versus the 5R110 ratios. The reason why the first gear is much lower on the 5R110 is they have a different lower verse planetary. Now you see over here, these are the, the tooth counts for the different planetaries, and you see the only difference is in the lower verse. Note, I'm using the 0304 5R110 tooth counts. They That started changing in 05, and I believe it changed again later, and, and maybe in 08, I'm not sure, but they do change them. But in 0304, this is what they are. We're gonna do our overdriven first gear, which is what the 5R110 second gear is. So for that, we need forward, and we're gonna apply overdrive. Everything else is free. Now our expected ratio here is 1.93 with our stock 4R100 internal. So a, a 2.71 first gear. Now we're looking at a 1.93 overdriven first gear, which is what the 5R110 second gear is. All right, we'll count our teeth. So we're about nine and a half. So our expected is 1.93. I got 1.89. We're gonna do the overdriven second gear. That should get us our, our expected, which is 1.09. Our overdriven second gear is gonna be the 5R110 fourth gear. So that's forward. We want intermediate. And then we're gonna apply the overdrive. There it is. So we've got forward, intermediate, and overdrive. This is our overdriven 4R100 second gear, which is what the 5R110 fourth gear is. And our expected ratio is 1.09 here. Teeth, looks like 16, 1.12. So again, eyeballs and not putting enough load on it. So let's look at these charts side by side here. So this is the, this is the 4R100 factory gears for the four speed. Here's the, here's a stock 5R110. And here's what we just did. Let's call it the 5R100. Now you can see the difference in the ratios again the, only, the reason why the, the 5R110 has such better first and second gears and an overall better spread is because it uses a much larger low reverse planetary. Now we can do that. We can make a custom reverse section that'll give us all these ratios. Is it cost effective? I don't know. Is it interesting to see? Absolutely. We just need a larger low reverse section and a custom control body to, to handle an array of solenoids to activate everything electronically.